Hi, I'm Allie Sealander with the University of Texas at Dallas, and I'm here to tell you about how the oldest continents formed. Let's start with the basics. The Earth's crust is divided into two types, oceanic and continental crust. The oceanic crust makes up around 70% of the Earth's surface. It's thin, between four to six kilometers thick, or about two and a half to four miles, and relatively young, no more than 200 million years old. The rocks here are born in oceanic spreading ridges and then return to the mantle in the subduction zones at convergent boundaries. Continental crust makes up around 30% of the Earth's surface and is about 40 kilometers thick, or about 25 miles. Because of their low density, continents are more buoyant than oceanic crust, which means that they don't get recycled back into the mantle at subduction zones. The continents are composed of rocks that formed over the past 4 billion years, but with time comes erosion, which wears down the continents. That eroded rock is carried by rivers to the sea. Plate tectonics does a good job of subducting the oceanic crust and the overlying sediments, returning that material to the mantle. Thus, much of the earliest crust that formed has been recycled and lost from the rock record. As a result, we don't know how much continental crust formed in the first 2 billion years of Earth's existence. But some old crust has survived. All continents contain some crust that is 2.5 billion years or older, from way back in the Archean Neon. These areas of old continental crust are called cratons, from the German word kratogen, meaning born strong. In contrast to the faulted and folded regions that surround them, Cratons are undeformed because they are underlain by a strong mantle keel made of thick and buoyant, long-lived mantle lithosphere. Archean cratons preserve an important record of crust formation and growth through Earth's history, and also host important ore deposits. So how do we get these cratons? A new paper in the January 2023 issue of GSA Today looks at the story preserved in the oldest rocks on Earth. Author Carol Frost and her fellow co-authors explore how these Archean cratons formed, using the craton in Wyoming as an example. In Wyoming, Archean rocks are exposed in mountain uplifts that show vertical, three-dimensional sections of Archean crust for geoscientists to study. The new paper suggests that the Wyoming craton, like most cratons, results from three stages of evolution an initial stage where a thick basaltic or mafic crust forms, a middle stage characterized by a crust made of granitic rocks called TTGs, made by partially melting the initial mafic crust and the underlying mantle, and a final stage with rock assemblages that formed from plate tectonic processes. We will start with the youngest Archean rocks, because they are better preserved than the rocks of the earlier stages, so our interpretations are more confident. We will then work back in time and take a look at what happened in the second and first stage. The third and most recent stage led to the final stabilization of the Wyoming Craton. It's characterized by rock assemblages formed by plate tectonic processes, most notably when plates collide. Rocks in this stage include examples of continental magmatic arcs, high-pressure continent-continent collisional zones, granites formed by partial melting of aluminum-rich sedimentary rocks like shale, and lastly, we will see examples of accreted terrains. These features are indistinguishable from younger examples formed by modern tectonic processes. Let's look at one example of each of these four features. Continental magmatic arcs form on continental crust above subduction zones. Voluminous continental arc batholiths, composed of gabbro to diorite to granite, first appear in the Wyoming Craton in the Bighorn Mountains and the Beartooth Mountains, then in the Wind River Mountains, where granitic rocks form magnificent scenery. The compositions of these continental arc batholiths and their formation from a combination of mantle and crustal magma sources indicates that they are analogous to modern continental arcs like the Andes of South America. High-pressure metamorphic rocks form when continents collide, like in the modern Himalayas. One of the best examples of Archean rocks formed by continent-continent collision is preserved in the northern Teton Range, 
where two distinct gneisses with contrasting geologic histories were juxtaposed 2.68 billion years ago along shear zones that put high pressure metamorphic rocks against lower grade metamorphic rocks. Some granites form by melting aluminum rich sediments like shales, and these can be recognized because they contain aluminum rich minerals such as garnet. Such granites are characteristic of collision zones like the Himalayas. In the Wyoming Craton, they are found in the northern Teton Range and also in the east. Collision of smaller blocks to form large crustal tracks is called terrain accretion and is typical of modern plate tectonics. In the Wyoming Craton, metamorphosed igneous rocks of oceanic affinity and immature metasedimentary rocks occur along the southern margin of the Wyoming Craton, accreting to it 2.65 to 2.63 billion years ago. The middle stage in the Archean evolution of the Wyoming Craton is when voluminous granitic igneous rocks formed by partial melting of an older mafic crust. As this diagram shows, there are many kinds of granitic rocks, and those of this episode are comprised of tonalites, trondamites, and granodiorites, known as TTG for short. These rocks formed episodically over 600 million years to produce the continental nucleus of the Wyoming Craton. The oldest rock in the Wyoming Craton is a 3.45 billion year old TTG found in the Granite Mountains. This might be the oldest rock in the United States. Slightly younger TTG occur throughout the central and northern Wyoming Craton, with a major TTG episode at around 3.3 to 3.2 billion years ago. Scientists think that TTG magmas form by melting hydrated mafic rocks around 35 kilometers or 20 miles deep in the earth, implying the presence of a thick mafic crust similar to modern oceanic plateaus that would have formed during the initial stage of cratonic development. The geodynamic setting where partial melting of both crustal and mantle sources would produce voluminous TTG remains unresolved, with a variety of plume-based and horizontal plate-based tectonic scenarios proposed. There are no rocks preserved from the first stage of the Wyoming Craton, but we know something about this stage because of a mineral called zircon. Zircons are tiny but important crystals in the science of dating rocks, or geochronology. Once zircons are formed, they are hard to destroy, and they also trap small amounts of radioactive uranium when they form. Uranium decays to lead, and we can use the ratio of uranium to lead to determine when the zircon crystallized from a melt. Most zircon ages tell us when the rock that contains them were formed. But sometimes, zircons are inherited by other rocks and are no longer within the rock they originally formed in. The sturdy zircons may have persisted while their igneous host rock vanished. Inherited zircons are found in some sedimentary rocks and in younger granites and preserve an important record of rocks that no longer exist, like an heirloom passed down through the generations. Inherited zircons in the Wyoming Craton rocks range in age from 3.2 to 4 billion years old and suggest that the earliest stage was formed of thickened basaltic crust like that of Hawaii today. This crust may have formed over a mantle plume. The thick pile of basaltic rocks partially remelts to form small volumes of felsic melts that increased with time to form the embryo of the craton. In the Wyoming craton, the ages of the inherited zircon grains suggest the first felsic melts crystallized at about 3.8 to 4 billion years ago, the age of the oldest zircons. Maybe someday rocks of the first stage will be found in the Wyoming Craton. In summary, Archean crust from the Wyoming Craton formed as a result of three stages over about 1.5 billion years, very early in Earth's history. We know least about the first stage, which occurred from soon after the Earth formed at 4.6 billion years to around 3.5 billion years ago, because we only have the testimony of zircons. During this stage, basaltic crust formed. 
This early crust became thick and hot enough that the lower portions melted to create TTG melts. These early TTGs were the seeds from which the Wyoming craton grew. The second stage occurred between 3.5 and 2.9 billion years ago and is dominated by formation of vast volumes of TTGs. The oldest rocks in the Wyoming craton and maybe the United States formed during this stage. Both stage one basaltic crust and the underlying mantle melt to produce TTG magmas. The final stage in forming the Wyoming craton occurred between 2.6 and 2.8 billion years ago. This stage was characterized by modern plate tectonic processes. Starting at around 2.8 billion years ago, a number of rock assemblages characteristic of modern plate tectonic environments are preserved in the Wyoming craton, including continental arc batholiths, continent-continent collision zones, production of aluminum-rich granites from the melting of metasedimentary rocks, and accretion of exotic terrains. We hope you enjoyed learning about the Wyoming Craton. If you want to learn more, please read the article in the January 2023 issue of GSA Today. It's free to download. Just Google GSA Today and navigate to the January 2023 issue. Or check out the description box below this video for a link directly to the article. While you're there, you might want to check out some of the other articles that are also free to download. And if you want to learn more about the Wyoming Craton, and other cratons around the world, take a look at some of the references at the end of this video. This video was made in collaboration with Carol Frost and Susan Swamp of the University of Wyoming and UT Dallas's Geoscience Studio. Thanks for watching.